How's that looking? That's pretty. You guys know what you're looking at there? That is five ounce fillets, man. Black Angus, wet aged, 28 days, no fat. God, that's a nice cut of meat, man. They call that one the king of steaks right there. And they are not lying. And they got the bacon beside it. It's gonna be a good day. Hey everyone, my name is Mark Gill. This is Marks on the Grill. Come on in here, have a nice uh, look at this beef here. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wrap this in a bit of bacon and get this going. Uh, filet mignon, believe it or not, is actually one of the easiest steaks there is to cook. And that's because the fibers are really far apart, really spread out, loose, loose fibers. We'll get into that in a minute, all right? And what makes that kind of cool is that it really accepts the heat very well, permeates the meat very, very, very well. And also, uh, filet mignons have a nice high sidewall like your best tires. And what that means is when you cook these on the grill, which I like to do, there's no doubt we're uh, cooking on the grills just fine. But the only problem is, unless you want to sit there and, you know, uh, cook the sides, they, they end up not being as, you know, grilled as the rest. By the way, uh, instead of sticking a toothpick in here, because that's boring, go ahead and take a big skewer, stick that in, it's like a pilot hole. There we go. I'm real handy around the house. Not. There we are. Actually, I have a book, don't I? I have a book called 3001 Handyman Tips, written by yours truly and a ghostwriter who did most of it. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Salt, pepper, garlic, you guys. Don't mess with a good steak. There's no point in messing with a good steak. Salt, pepper, garlic, be happy. I got some really cool herb butter here. Uh, uh, it's got some garlic and some chives in, so we're gonna go ahead, pop that in there, make sure we got a nice bubble going on, and we do. So. Easiest way to cook a filet, sear it in a pan and pop it in an oven. Now, I tried to drag my oven out here, but I wasn't allowed. So we're gonna use our smoker. If you got a pellet smoker, it's the best thing, man. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Isn't that fantastic? That's all you're looking to do with the pan part of this, is get that really nice sear. So uh, let's give it on there for just a few more seconds. One of the things you wanna make sure of is that your temperature is going to be right. And you're not going to be able to do that without a thermometer. And in a cut of state like this, uh, they're, they're pricey, you spend a lot of money, they're, uh, you, you know, it's a top dollar. So you want to make sure that you've got this going right. So here, check this out. We got our hands on a Maverick XR30. I love this thing, man. Uh, at the beginning of the summer, we talked to Maverick because we wanted to kind of share one of the uh, most important things that anybody can have out in the barbecue, and that, of course, is a thermometer. And they make the best ones, and, and so they sent us a bunch of them to talk to you guys about. And this one is very cool. Uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a dual probe, so that means on the sending unit, it's got a spot for food and the barbecue. So you can keep an eye on the temperature of your food and you can keep an eye on the temperature of your barbecue. So if you're smoking, you know that you're not getting out of that range that you need to be in. And for your food, of course, you want to know when it's going to be done. And everything is done from the receiving unit. See that little uh, digital brain there? So you got all kinds of things you can do. You can go between uh, centigrade and Fahrenheit. You've got high and low settings for where you want the barbecue to be. And for us, we've set our food at 130. I want these steaks to be 130 degrees. And what's nice about this uh, kind of two-piece setting here is that this has a sender in it, all right? And that sender is gonna send that signal up to 500 feet. So even if you've got a fair size property like we're lucky enough to have here, you can still wander around, do your thing, get your work done, and this thing's gonna beep and buzz and throw a fit when it's all time to be done. So let's throw that in here. Now, I'm putting it in the smoker outside. If I was at home, I would of course go ahead and uh, uh, put that right in the oven. And I've got that set at about 445 degrees right there. So our steaks are 79 degrees. Look at that, isn't that fun? So in the meantime, let's go ahead on our Blackstone, there we go. Now this has a belt clip, you can stick it in your pocket or whatever, I'm just gonna leave it out here. There we go. Nice stuff. All right, always oil up your grill. Look at this, look, look. Get a look at that, isn't that nice? Look at that lot of garlic and chives in there, man. that's nice stuff. So let's go ahead and cook our potatoes in this and we're gonna leave just enough to finish that steak off with. This is beautiful. Uh, we haven't talked about Blackstone for a while, guys. Flat top grilling is one of the uh, best ways you're gonna cook your food. Uh, steaks, hamburgers, veggies, potatoes are fantastic. When you're doing your potatoes, guys, uh, you know, a lot of things are like, uh, you know, it's all about timing. As soon as you start to see that little crisp there, that's when you know it's probably an okay time to get ready with your onions. So we got a little bit more to go. Let me, while these are getting a nice crisp on them, invite you back here and let's talk about those steaks for a second, okay? We are nothing if not educational here. That's all there is to it. 
All right. So uh, if you're a filet mignon person uh, and, and you've looked into this stuff and you get it, that's great. But for those of you who've never really kind of taken a second to go, why in the world do these people charge me 30, 40, 50 bucks for one of these steaks at a restaurant? Doesn't make any sense, right? There's a few things to look for when you're looking at a filet mignon that's going to justify the price. Now, first things first here, let me show you how rare these are, okay? You see this? There's the, there's the whole animal, right? And right there is the tenderloin. Here's the last time I'm going to tell this joke all week. Uh, it, it, kind of like your teenager, it doesn't work very hard. So it's nice and soft, and it just kind of is there. It, it doesn't toughen up. There's no reason to. But, guys, there's only one of these things, all right? The little, uh, a little part on the end there when they kind of cut it right there, that's the Chateau Briand. That's why that's expensive. There's only one per animal. When you get down in this end here, that's when you're getting a lot of the T-bones and porterhouses. But when you want a good filet mignon, here's the questions to ask. Is it Black Angus? Has it been aged? And is it center cut? Because center cut means that you get that one or two filets in the entire animal that are good enough for that cut. And that, like, uh, we, we got a really good opportunity to talk to the whole country about that over the last few days. And that's what we've got in that pan there that the Maverick thermometer is keeping an eye on at a trusty 102 degrees. Things are moving along swimmingly. <laughs>